sixth grade, module six, lesson 19, problem set. Number one, college athletic programs are separated into divisions based on school size, athletic, available athletic scholarships, and other factors. A researcher wondered if members of swimming and diving programs in division one, usually larger schools that offer athletic scholarships, tend to be taller than the swimmers and, div and divers in division three programs, usually smaller schools that do not offer sco athletic scholarships. To begin the investigation, the researcher creates side-by-side -side box plots where the heights in inches of 41 male swimmers and divers at Mountain Vista University, a D1 program, and the heights in inches of 10 male swimmers and divers at Eagle Crest College, a Division III program. Okay, so we can see here the two different box plots. Here's Mountain Vista University and here's Eagle Crest College. Which data set has the smaller range? So the range is the distance from the minimum to the maximum. So the minimum and the maximum. So from what I'm looking at here, it looks like, what's this one called? Mountain Vista University has a larger range. I can see that without even figuring out the range. So let's say, but they asked who has a smaller range. So Eagle Crest College has the smaller range. So let's say Eagle Crest College. True or false, a swimmer who had a height equal to the median for the Mountain Vista University would be taller than the median height of swimmers and divers at Eagle Crest College. So a swimmer who had equal height, who had the median height for Mountain Vista, so a swimmer right here, there's the median, so a swimmer with that height would be taller than the median height of swimmers at Eagle Crest. Well, yes, that's true. So this is taller. This is about maybe like 73 inches, and this is in the middle of there, let's see, maybe like 69 inches. So yeah, about four inches taller. So that is true. C, to be thorough, the researcher will examine many other colleges' sports programs to further investigate the claim that members of swimming and diving programs in D1 are generally taller than the swimmers and divers in D3. But given the graph above, is this initial stage of her research, do you think that the claim might be valid? Carefully support your answer using summary measures or graphical attributes. So I would say yes, that it probably is valid based on just the two teams because, I mean, the greater, so this is the top 75% here. The top 75% is greater than the lower, a whole set lower 75% of the other college. So it's, I mean, four inches taller. The medians are four inches apart, which is a big difference when you're talking about height. So I would think that maybe it might, might not be this drastic if you compare all of the one and D3 teams, but I would say it's pretty safe to assume that you're going to get similar, um, similar results. So let's say based on these two teams, I would think the claim would be correct. I would say the claim is correct. Let's say a large portion of the, let's call it Mountain Vista U, let's see, MVU distribution is higher than the maximum value for Eagle Crest College, we'll call it EC. So that's saying a large portion of this is greater than even just the maximum. So here's the maximum for Eagle Crest. We've got all of this data left that's taller than just the maximum. And so let's say also we talked about the medians. The median for Mountain Vista University is four inches higher, inches, let's see, 
let's say inches taller. Then the median of Eagle Crest College. Number two, data on the weight in pounds of 100 polar bears and 50 grizzly bears are summarized in the box plots shown below. Okay, so we have polar bears, grizzly bears. Just by looking at it, it looks like polar bears generally weigh a lot more than the grizzly bears. A, true or false, at least one of the polar bears weighs more than the heaviest grizzly bear. Explain how you know. Okay, at least one polar bear weighs more than the heaviest grizzly bear. Well, here's the heaviest grizzly bear. Did at least one weigh more? Well, yeah, a lot more, more than 75% more. Most of them weighed more than the heaviest grizzly bear. Because we can see here, this is Q1, so there's 25% below that data point. So 75% is above. So we know the vast majority of the data is above. So let's say true, the lower quartile and the median weight for polar bears were greater than the max weight for grizzly bears. So at least 75% of the polar bears weighed more than the heaviest grizzly bear. Okay, so that's A. All right, B, we do B in red. True or false, weight differs more from bear to bear for polar bears than for grizzly bears. Explain how you know. So that's talking about the range. Does it differ more from polar bears than grizzly bears? I would say yes. It has a much greater range than for um, than for the grizzly bears. And we can talk about the IQR also. The IQR is larger for polar bears than grizzly bears. So there's more variation or variability in that data as well. Do do B up here. I'm doing a little backwards. That's okay. So true, the weights of grizzly bears are more compact than polar bears. See, grizzly bear, I'm going to call it a grizzly bear, GB, weight distribution. Has a smaller range. And IQR than the polar bears, PBs. See which type of bear tends to weigh more. Explain. So I would say by looking at this, it's pretty obvious that the polar bears tend to weigh more. Um, just from what we said, even from part B, where we said 75% of them weigh more than even the um, maximum of a grizzly bear. So let's say polar bears tend to weigh more. The median weight, I'm just going to kind of repeat what I said earlier. So the median weight for grizzly bears, for grizzly bears, is much smaller or much less 
than the median for polar bears and about half of the grizzly bear weight distribution is lower than the minimum weight for polar bears. So that's saying that, let's see, he said the about half the grizzly bear weight distribution, so this, about half of it is lower than even the minimum weight for polar bears. So those are about the same. So half the data is lower than just the minimum there. So half of the polar bears weigh less than, or half of the grizzly bears weigh less than even the tiniest polar bear. Number three, many movie studios rely heavily on viewer data to determine how a movie will be marketed and distributed. Recently, previews of a soon-to-be-released movie were shown to 300 people. Each person was asked to rate the movie on a scale of 0 to 10, with 10 representing best movie I've ever seen, and 0 representing worst movie I've ever seen. Below are some side-by-side -side box plots that summarize the ratings by gender and by age. For 150 women and 150 men, so we have women, men, so it looks like these are very similar. They have about the same median. Q1 is the same, Q3 is the same. The only thing I noticed, I mean, the maximums even seem to be the same. Just the men had a, the minimum for a woman was a five and the minimum for the men was a four. And then if you add in the three age groups, so these are the same for, so this are, these are women and men and these are for the age groups. So it looks like the older age group was similar. They liked the movie. Same medians, similar max, and but again, the 25 to 39 just had a lower minimum than the 40 to 60. And then 18 to 24 didn't seem to like it as much. It had a lower median score, um, lower max score. The highest max score was a 9, so nobody thought it was the best movie they'd ever seen. So those are some talking points that you could talk about in these answers to these questions. So A, does it appear that the men and women rated the film in a similar manner or in a very different manner? Write a few sentences explaining your answer using comparative information about center and variability. So that's the first one we talked about, men and women. So comparing these. So I would say they rated them very similar, very similarly. same Q1 median Q3 and max the women so who had a lower minimum the men had a lower minimum the women had a higher minimum than the men who had, let's just change that around so it sounds better if we say the men had a lower minimum for than women. So that's their minimum. Someone rated it five. Okay, so B, it appears that the film tended to receive better ratings from the older members of the group. Write a few sentences using comparative measures of center and spread or aspects of the graphical displays to justify this claim. Okay, so again, for the three age groups, kind of what we talked about. So the older age groups, 25 to 39 and 40 to 64, are pretty similar. Just the 25 to 39 had a lower minimum. So let's say the two oldest age groups... Had the same Q1 median. So they have the same Q1, the same median, the same Q3, 
and the same max. So those four measures are all the same. They're just off on their minimums. So same Q1, median, Q3, and max. The median here for the youngest group was the Q1 for the two older groups, so we could say that. So we're just looking for any points that we can use to compare. There's really no right or wrong answer. You're just noticing your observations and how things differ from one another. So let's say the median from the youngest group was the same as Q1 from the older two groups. You could also say something like the two, um, the two older groups had a max score of 10, whereas the youngest group had a max score of 9. You could say that the two younger groups had a min score of 4, but the 40 to 64 group, the oldest group, had a minimum score of 6. So we can just go through, explain some more observations, maybe pick one more to write about.